Good morning, guys, and welcome to today's edition of the London Session Open. Today is Friday, May 22nd, 2020, and it's 10 a.m. in London when we're doing this market update. Today, I have quite a lot of time, actually, so we're going to be able to answer questions. We don't have that meeting that I usually have at 10 a.m. in the morning, so that's good. I think that's good news, and that gives us more time to, to talk about the markets. All right, so I don't have any headlines for you. But I'm going to show you what I do best, and there's some good charts. So what am I looking at here then? Well, that is the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, the CFD of that one. And you see some dramatic falls on the CFD pricing today. The price is down with some 4.32%. And from yesterday's high, we're down a solid 7.41%. So why is it like that then? Well, because... We have a situation here uh, where, where we can have some increased uh, protests. And the reason for that is that China is looking to impose uh, some new laws in, in Hong Kong. You might remember last year, how oh, there was a lot of controversy and a lot of uh, protests that literally, I think for the first time in a very long time, the city of Hong Kong had a contraction in their economy um, because of the protests. Now, obviously, with the, the virus and everything, all that tapered off. Uh, but now uh, they're looking to impose uh, China some new uh, legislation. And that is something that uh, is, according to the Financial Times, quoting them, threatening the, the Hong Kong as a financial hub. So it's going to be interesting to see, see what happens there uh, with that situation. But it's definitely influencing the markets in a, in a negative way. And as well president trump as well i think he mentioned already yesterday uh he, his dislike to any changes like that and it, it is it is fragile it's interesting because it's obviously hong kong is the hub for for has been usually been the hub to enter into china and it's the financial hub where they can borrow money uh access international markets uh, and these legislations can undermine that and um we'll see what happens but even for you know rich rich Chinese families, you know they could always, if they wanted to, just move to other places. I reckon, uh, places like Hong Kong, which is not uh, sorry Singapore, which is not that far away, um, and maybe potentially move businesses. So it's a bit of a tricky situation. I don't think we we'll, we'll, we need to see what happens, but that definitely influenced this in a negative way. And from a trading perspective, we will actually breach a range. And that range suggests we can actually trade much lower. And this is putting a little bit of a, uh, like a bearish outlook on many other things that we watch uh, here as well. So you'll see in a few minutes how European stock markets are coming down, not just solely because of this, um, but because on their own, they struggle to trade much higher. But this definitely adds to, to that negative mood. All right, in the chat box today, we have Sarbriyat and we have Julie. So good morning to you guys. Thanks so much for joining me this morning. If you guys are new to this uh, daily market update, it's something we usually host from quarter to uh, 9.45 until about 10 a.m. Uh, it used to be a bit longer, but because of the uh, coronavirus situation, uh, things have changed. Uh, so I'm quite busy in the mornings. So we only do 15 minutes now, but usually we have a bit more time, like half an hour. 20 minutes to answer questions and i think we can do that today so if you do have questions you can just pop them here in the chat box and if you're new to this market or to this daily market update you can click here you should click on that anyway and then there is like a little button to to the right here uh if you are not logged in so it looks like this so if you're looking at this like a, a like that you see there's a subscribe button and then when you click on it a little bell button is going to populate to your right and what happens then is that if you have the the youtube app you get a notification when i go live and that's actually the best the alternative is that you would just follow me on twitter uh, at alex uh, fx that's my twitter handle you can find it by clicking here on that button um, but it's always better just to just follow me on, on i mean you should do both actually uh okay good let's not waste any time now so your usd 
so we're still within this range right so within this range and this range has lost it here since april and the same way as the people bought here and the price pushed to the upside people having selling here and they're pushing prices to the downside so why is that happening well because we are in a sideways range and that's why i have been neutral so i've been neutral between 107 uh 51 and 110 17. i'm not interested to trade these ranges but if you are interested in trade ranges then the general idea is to try to sell close to the highs and then try to book profits in the middle or maybe on the other side of the range usually somewhere in the middle is a good idea because if you hold this could easily just go up really it can go up and then have a breaker so you would give up on that so most people just look for the midpoint maybe a little bit more and then they go up now what's the problem with this then why, why do i not prefer these things well first things first there is always a situation where you have a false move uh where the market goes above so you need you can't necessarily put the stop loss there exactly so imagine you do like that okay you probably need to put the stop loss up here now as i just said it's unlikely that it's gonna easily go down to the other side if it could go down easy to the other side, you would make 1.91 times your risk. So you risk 1% and then you make 1.91%. Uh, you risk 2%, then you make full and so on and so on. So more realistically, you're going to be somewhere here in the middle. So that's going to give you like a one-to-one -one ratio, ratio. Now, if you have a superior feeling and understanding of ranges, then yeah, this is, this is a good thing because, you know, you will get your 1% there. Maybe you got your 1% uh, here, and maybe you got yourself your 1% here, and then maybe you did the opposite, and you, you, you bought, but here, for example, I'm just guessing, maybe here, you put your stop loss too tight, so here you would have actually had lost, so you would not have made money on that one, and then here, you know, you would have waited a long time, but if you would have kept it long enough, maybe you would have done your one to one again, but many times these setups they're quite fragile and they fail and that is the issue so that's why i don't necessarily trade these and then the other thing i don't have personally i don't have patience to do this but for some people it's perfectly fine to do this you know and there's you can check this pair out there, there are other pairs as well there are traditionally trading sideways so some people what they do is that they look so i look at many different markets so i i, I try to watch everything so these are like i think i have about 100 different markets here different currency pairs like dollar polish slotty for example right people don't usually look at that i do um so so there are some people that just focus exclusively on those sideways patterns uh and they trade a lot during the asian session and and, and they do that good and that's one style but it's not really for me so Looking at the EURUSD today, I continue to be neutral. And again, we might go up and maybe we'll, you might be able to sell here 109, 20, 60 or something like that. Stop losses above here and they might be right again. But again, it's not really my cup of tea because the risk reward ratio is not really that good. And the, the time you need to, to wait. So here's, for example, something I prefer better. So here's the GBP USD. So a few days ago, we said, look, to sell here for this to go down. And we're down here. I said, book profits or at least 75%. That's what I would have done. And then I said, if we go up here, people can sell again. And people didn't need sell. So this position, well, I mean, the, the actual situ setup was triggered four days ago. And now after four days, we're coming back into profit. And that's also another little point. We have time today, so I'm going to make this more educational. That's why I don't deal too much with the short term. Why? Because the big picture telling me is down. I think everybody can see that it's down. But even myself, the matrix in 2016 or 2006, I don't know exactly when it will turn down. So a lot of people do, they try to go very short term. And trust me, I did short term for eight years. It's ridiculously hard. So that's why I have slightly wider stop loss orders. Because I know that ultimately, as long as trade bill is high, we're gonna go down. But I have no clues if it's going to be today, tomorrow, or maybe next week. And sometimes it takes a long time. Um, but if you have the patience, then time will reward you. If you stick with simple rules, um, time will reward you. But if you go very short term, you, know, you can have President Trump tweeting right now. Even though it's a little bit too early in, in New York right now, uh, in Washington. He can tweet right now. And then... You know it can spike up 
and then come Monday morning, he will say something different. And then we go down again. You see, that's the randomness I try to avoid. So anyway, so the outlook we shared with you four days ago is playing out good. As well, yesterday I said if you're not in position and we swing up, we can potentially sell up here. I don't remember exact levels, but it was around here. So obviously if you sold at the slightly better level yesterday, you'll be even uh, in, in a better position. Looking at this today, we can take the stop loss, probably push it down there, but we'll do that when the price reverses the low here again. For now, because this is uh, some sort of a descending triangle uh, to some extent, I'm still thinking that we can trade much lower. So from a pattern perspective, uh, difference from here to here gives you this pattern. Just so you know as well, if you are interested, we do have what we call the Forex trading course, where trading with patterns is one of the modules that are in that course. We also talk about trend trading in general, and this is something you can get either by buying it outright or getting it by uh, setting up an account with ATFX. Uh, you can read more about it just clicking on that little link here. And if you're interested, here's the link for that as well. It's all free with the purpose to help traders reach their trading goals faster. I spent eight years, so trust me, help is always good. All right, uh, dollar yen, uh, dollar yen a bit quiet. There's not a lot of activity here today. And the idea has been, you know, take out 108.09 and people get all excited. We can probably push higher. And that's what I've been looking for. But the market is not really doing this right now, right? It's not. So it's a situation here where I, I would, I would just be neutral. Okay. I wouldn't get too excited. All right. Um, this is the price of gold. So gold, we talked about buying here a few days ago. And again, remember the, we're going, going up and everybody at that point were like, oh, I missed out on that great opportunity. And yeah, maybe we would have missed out on that great opportunity, but look, the risk reward ratio did not warrant buying at these levels. And that's why I said, look for a pullback, look to buy here potentially with stop loss orders down here. And now that seems to be okay. I mean, we we're still within a bit of a sideways pattern, like a mini pattern, like a mini bear flag or something like that. But ultimately the big picture trend still is pointing upwards and we did not trade below my trend defining low. Can it fail? Of course it can fail. But the technicals and also now because of the tensions in the world do suggest we're going to probably trade higher in gold prices. Now let's take a look at, at crude. So crude actually had a bit of a shake up yesterday. So I was talking about you know, being bullish above this level, if you wanted to. So the question was, why did I say that? Well, because the price had taken up this high. So usually when you take out a big high, we can probably go upwards. You know, what's a bit ironic is that I said as well, we can be bullish here, uh, but I was not very confident in that. And here I suddenly turned con confident to say, okay, buy a dip and maybe we'll go upwards. But that's also when we fail. And, and sometimes it is like that. And it, that's just the way the market works. Uh, I was also, of course, uh, you know, um, confident about all this stuff that worked out really good, but I've been a bit neutral in this pair, uh, in this asset for since, since we bottomed out here, actually, so, so since uh, here, actually, my last idea was to sell here, that one got stopped out. And then I said, we can probably go from here to here, which we did, but I wasn't really confident in it. And then I said, look for this to continue. Let's buy a dip, but that did not work out. Now, looking at this today, personally, I think this was inevitable. At one point, this would result into something like that because from its low to its high and went up with a hundred percent. If you look at the, the June contract, because this is the July contract, they went up with like 350%. I mean, even if you would put a small amount of risk on that one, it was still would have been a good, good money. And I never really thought we were going to go straight up. And that's really what we're looking at here right now. We're looking at a failure to break much higher. It doesn't mean that we can't recuperate, but I reckon it will try to carve out some sort of a low here, a high, and then we'll see what happens. Now, my preference is to wait. <laughs> Why wait? Well, because I think it might go up, might go down. And if we're lucky, it will form 
maybe a rectangle or something like that and then we can be bullish or bearish if you think otherwise and you think oh you know what i i think this is not gonna hold then maybe you know when it attacks the upside one can potentially sell a bit so if it goes up to like 32 point say say 33 maybe it stops at 36 you might have that move the problem with that again is is that we're dealing with a counter trend move and realistically it will probably spend some time doing something like this and there's no rush here there's other opportunities which are much better and those opportunities are in the stock markets um so if i load the german dax let's see if i can show that for you um, so this is the german dax would i buy the german dax at this spot at 11,005 no i would not um, but we're trading within a range and what's happened here is it was trying to go upwards failed to take out the high people got a uh we moved down a little bit you got all these declines in asia so people get a little bit nervous and what's happening here is that short-term traders are getting kicked out sitting so getting kicked out here and you have the little uh overreaction now the market is stabilizing again but you know what guys this is good we want to see this when you have that little consolidation just underneath a small level then that's amazing because what happens here is that we could potentially do something like this entry goes there stop goes here and you go up with so a 2 points uh 26 times first world ratio whereas if it would have attacked immediately yeah okay you would have put it here but this little low here is fragile so most people would have done something like that and then suddenly your issue will raise is 1.43 which is not as solid so let's see what happens here i think it will trade sideways for a bit longer uh, i hope so and then we'll just take out the high if it doesn't then this is not too much different than the euro usd why because you have solid support here solid resistance here so what happened with the euro usd when it couldn't trade much higher it went all the way down and the way your usd is looking right now it looks like it can go all the way down to maybe 108 maybe so this is the same situation here with the german dax keep an eye on it maybe we can buy at the lower end of the range alternatively buy the breaker now a, a bit of a tip here don't just look at the german dax in isolation where is the s p doing where's the dow jones at where's the nasdaq doing what's the situation i think actually you can limit yourself to those get try to get like a big picture perspective if many of these markets are at their buy spots then that increases the likelihood that you're going to be right at the same time if more and more markets start to break a higher then that's also an indication that you might be all right all right so this is the s p now if i would remove s p and replace it with the dax i mean they all look the same right so sideways price action there's no Im very very strong trend and we have a bit of a bullish bias why are people bullish well because of the uh moderna uh, vaccine right so the vaccine there um the first trial uh was successful the first phase of the trial now they're going over to the second trial and then i think there's a third trial and i read something different i'm not sure if it's the same but i think i read something different here with uh, there's another company astrazeneca i'm not sure if it's the same but where they have already uh, been trialing some vaccines so things are coming and things are in progress that's gonna hopefully uh make sure that we can um uh, go back to work and back to normal life i think normal life i think that's what people want all right good we just covered all the main markets so let's see if you guys have any questions if you do so you're most welcome just to put, put them in the chat box if you're going to leave now because you, you you need to go ahead with your trading don't forget to click on the button don't forget to like the video so this is a free thing we do and if you're interested of course we have all the premium stuff but if you like the free stuff please don't forget to hit that like button because that that will tell youtube that that content here that's reproducing is valuable and then it's going to show up in people's recommendations and things like that and that tells me that i'm on the right track that i'm doing a good job uh, and that so as we grow we grow more together um, because there's always competition unfortunately that's always the way it works so to give you an idea you know sometimes if i will push an or push a certain article here you know we get a thousand views so then you say okay 150 views on videos or a thousand views an article sometimes we get like 5,000 views on an article so those are the judgment calls we need to do sometimes so if you like it 
don't forget to support it by clicking on the like button. And if you want to know more about my trading style and you want to do that in a safe and free environment, then you have that as well. And what's also really cool with the premium is, is that if you would set up accounts with, uh, well, we have a tier called um, the Edge account, which is a minimum deposit of 5,000, then you also get coaching included. But because the coaching is a new thing, we have actually lowered that threshold uh, so you can actually get it for slightly less. What you can do here, you just click on free coaching as well if you want to know more about that. It's actually a question forward. You can talk with me, or you can also talk with any of my uh, colleagues here on investingcube.com and you can do combinations. So for example, if you like Eno style, you can check out his articles. You can see how he produces content. And, and, and if that's the style you want to learn more about, then you can speak with him. Is it me? Then you speak with me. Is it Crispus or Nicholas Angeline? Then you can speak with them. All right. Let's see if you guys have any questions. Uh, all right. Welcome says, any thoughts on the news of this morning of the huge deviation of the 61.4 billion borrowing in April versus 35 expecting triple the highest ever borrowing? Yes. So obviously we're borrowing money or the UK government is borrowing money because of the because of the coronavirus. And it really depends on how the UK government is going to try to tackle this. If they try to say, all right, UK population, we borrow this money to support you. And you know, you have five years to pay that back, then it's going to be bad because that's what they did last time. Uh, they put austerity measures in place for the last five years or something like that. And you know, many of the other countries did really good. And the UK struggled. And uh, if you like a public health worker or working in the public sector, I think you didn't get any increases in salaries. Well, was it two or was it five years? I don't remember. It was something crazy. Now, the same people here now, if they start to increase taxes and impose freezes again, I mean, this is a bit silly. I think these people have been helping us to, to get the economy going or to keep us healthy. And now you're going to reward them by not increasing their salaries. Um, so if that would happen, I'm just speculating now. So it all depends on the, um, on the view here by, um, Prime Minister Boris Johnson. If they want us to pay back the UK public to pay back things imminently, then it's, it's, it's going to be bad. Uh, on the other hand, if they take a more pragmatic, uh, outlook and says, all right, we're not going to pay this back in, 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 in five years, we're going to do this in 15 or 20 years then the impact is going to be minimal. What do I think is going to happen? I think it's going to be difficult, but I reckon if, for example, the UK would crash out of the EU, maybe we'll do that later this year. It could be a situation that uh, we won't necessarily see that. We might see even tax cuts. Uh, and I think that's really what we're leading towards. Uh, I think Prime Minister Boris Johnson is a little bit like uh, President Trump, where they want to see good results in the very short term. They're not going to have the view that that the, his predecessors had. Um, so hopefully that's what we're going to be. But more importantly, hopefully they can just decide that we're not going to we're going to take our time to pay this back. Of course, if we just accumulate and accumulate debt, at one point we're going to be in a situation like maybe Italy where the uh, credit rating of the UK is not good anymore, like the one that is for Italy. And then suddenly you start to pay more on your debt uh, because the interest rates have ticked up. Now, what didn't come out, and I was reading about this in the Financial Times this morning, what I didn't really see is what was the yield that was um, being issued for that. Because let's check this out. Uh, so we did an article about this thing two days ago or something. Let me see what's it? Yeah, I think two, two yesterday. I can't find it now, but yeah, yeah, no, look here. The government sold bonds for 4.6 billion that will mature in 2023 with a negative yield of 0.003. So what's happening here that we're borrowing for nothing, right? We're borrowing for nothing. There's not going to be an actual cost for the 4.6 billion. Now, I think the amount, as you mentioned, is, uh, is higher 
but if we're borrowing for zero percent then we definitely need to pay things back but we don't have to pay them back imminently and i hope that's what the government is doing that's what i would have done at least um is there a risk in it that we implode of course there's always a risk for that but what people are forgetting because this whole debt the de de uh, debate has always been there is that governments they will survive all of us you know uh my my i was i don't remember dates very good but uh but if you look at something like the the the, the uk as a state or england as a country you know how many hundreds of years have they been here so if you look at it from that perspective they don't have to pay things back now they can pay it back in 200 years if they want to the 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 trick is get everybody's income to increase faster than your debt on the other hand if you have a situation like you have in in many parts of southern europe where it's not like that and then that's when you have an issue when your debt increases faster than what you're making but i think the way we are pushing to us in the uk we have a situation now where they're going to liberate things and it's going to be a situation where it's going to be easier to hire and fire much like the us and at least from a corporate perspective you know we're probably going to be easier to make money as long as you tax it right because if you don't tax it right the government itself is going to go poorer whereas you have like multinational companies so just making millions of pounds and that's already happening and as long as we don't go towards that then we're going to be okay but if we go towards maybe what's happening in other parts of the world then you know we're going to become poorer all right, so God Bassa the second says, good morning, made it for the live broadcast instead of the recorded one. Good work. <laughs> yes, I know on my end as well, I should be much more uh, strict on on starting at time. But the, the issue here is that um, I have so much stuff on my plate. As so we got any thoughts on Bitcoin? Yes, we'll take a look at Bitcoin. And we have Nick. Hey, Nick, hope you're well. Uh, if you'd see him, Nick, I think it is. Good morning. Thank you so much for the your help. Uh, so, uh, thoughts on you. Okay, so let's let's take a look at uh, Bitcoin first. All right, so Bitcoin is actually at an interesting junction. It's definitely interesting. So it, it rose very sharply, and you know it's been creating these lower and lower highs and significant volatility. It was up with sixty percent on the year, and then it was down with forty percent on the year. Now we're just lingering here, and it's trying to trade higher. Now the key point I will key level I would watch, even though it's not a complete pattern yet, but the key level I would watch would be 10,528. Take that out, we can probably see significant gains. What I would do as well here, which I suspect is gonna happen, if we don't take out this level, it could be a situation where this market tries to carve out like some sort of a head and shoulders. So we could have a situation like the following, where you have maybe trading sideways and then we go down. And then we come close to something like that and then spend a little bit of time there and then we go upwards yeah what do we need for this to go upwards we need stock markets to start to push upwards again this is these these markets follow stock markets really really closely the general idea has been that it's a safe haven that's that's proven wrong so many times because what's happening now i think is that when when, when people are happy and they're making money whatever spare money they have they would be happy to put that into something like bitcoin if you put stock markets on top of the bitcoin price you're going to see that there's a high correlation and that makes sense i think that makes sense to the majority of people then of course you have your hardcore fans that believe that this is going to revolutionize the world and these guys are always long right um but it's the masses that drive this to the upside and um I mean, again, because stock markets, I think, stopped in their tracks, they stopped as well in its tracks. But I think this is the scenario we're going towards right now. I might be wrong. I'm actually, I would love to see this break higher and do something like that. Because when this market goes wild, it goes really wild. And you can make some serious money in a very short period of time. You can, of course, lose money. But if you if you know what you're doing, then, then you know, you'll put your stop loss where it needs to be and you're going to be okay. I remember I I didn't actually follow Bitcoin for, for, for so long. So 
I was working for another broker at the time and they were going to introduce uh, Bitcoin. And so I started to track price. I started to do some technical analysis in uh, summer of, uh, of 2017. And then I did a few webinars about it. And then I looked back at my charts and I've like everything I said for the last six months were like making uh, money because this was such a strong trend. And I used a trend following system. So when you have a super strong trend and you use a trend following system like the one I have, then you just make very excessive returns. So it actually took some time before I got involved, but I got involved here in December. And I remember in December at that time was so many people that were actually cryptos that I, I had to wait, I think two weeks before my money landed on the crypto account. But then when I did get involved, I think I bought Bitcoin cash and I bought ripple. So I think I bought uh, Bitcoin cash. It did a hundred percent return. I moved all the money, pushed that into Ripple. That made like a 100% return for me as well. And then um, I remember here, I think in Christmas time, things were going up again. I didn't buy Bitcoin directly. I bought something else. And then I had my stop losses in. So at the very end, I gave back a bit of profit. Uh, and then I think I bought, tried to buy somewhere here. I was up a bit. And then I would come down to break even. And then I didn't trade it. But what's really interesting is that when that crazy move happened, it was super easy to 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 make some very good trading. It was really easy just to make money. It was going to be blunt. Um, but then again, when it turned crazy like that, I just ignored the market altogether. And that's why I'm actually quite excited. So if we can take out 10,528, then I think we can actually trade higher. And while we add it, I'm actually hosting a special webinar about it so i'm hosting a webinar about it on the 28th but we're going to take a look at cryptos we're going to take a look at some of the altcoins as well i don't have the registration link so i'm going to send it to you now you should give me a second So just give me a little second here. I'm going to pull that up for you. Okay. So it's going to be on the 28th. And here's the link for that. It's free to join, it's free to sign up. Um, it's gonna be a, a, a 45 minute overview where we look at many different coins. Okay, so we're gonna finish with the last questions here, which is from Basa the second. Thoughts on shares despite Buffett's doomsday scenario. I can't help thinking uh, IIG looks good. Just for okay, so I think there's some measures there that um, there's some measures that could be uh, suggesting that from a long-term perspective, you know, you should stay away. So Warren Buffett, he looks like, I think a stock market capitalization over GDP. And let's see if we can find that one. Let's see if we can find someone that has done it. So yeah, this is, they call it the Buffett indicator. It's actually corporate equities. Well, actually that's not the one. <laughs> yeah, this is the one. All right. So what they've done here is the value of the stock market over GDP. Uh, and then I think they have it. All right, it's not even a lot of data. This is not good. I, I don't think I'm going to find what I'm looking for. Okay, this is the value. Okay, you can't see it. All right, so this is this is the value of the um, 
where is it there we go uh wheelchair 5000 so wheelchair is like the 5000 small caps in the us and you take that divided over gdp and you get this indicator which is fairly range bound so what it does tell you is that the stock market is as overvalued as it was here and that is what is uh so from that perspective effectively buy now and then probably your returns over the next 10 years are not going to be good okay so that is what this is telling you but um the times are a little bit different here because you need to remember that the uh they did a ton of tax cuts in the u.s that boosted the economy and they're pumping so much money into the economy now and if you look at from the perspective that they're not going to remove that imminently then what's going to happen is is that you're going to have that push into financial assets and real estate probably even because interest rates are super low so i think that's going to continue because they pumped so much money so because if we get a vaccine and everything's fine by summer next year next year it's going to be a situation where that money is still going to be in the system they're not going to just scale that back and i think that could boost certain certain companies so i don't know about the company that you mentioned if it has a good or not bad company but just to give you an idea something that i understand a bit better um so let's see if i can find it now i think it's going there. i'm not gonna find it now but there's certain companies that make sense to be bullish like just take the most obvious thing i think everybody can relate to it like Apple, for example. So when Apple slid here at one point, it was down with 36%. So that was the same levels as we saw here in 2008. In and then, you know, obviously when things were really bad here, you know, everybody says they want to buy quality stocks on a pullback, but very few people do that. But this is a quality stock. I mean, we all jump over the new phones as soon as they're being produced. And it's been like that for a few years and i can't see anybody else rivaling that just yet that can attack the mainstream guy obviously there's some some people that do phones that are far better but i can't really see someone managing to do this easily so i would focus on good quality companies and if you have some good technical setups then that's what i would be focusing on of course you don't want to buy apple here they already risen if it has a pullback yeah if it develops into some sort of pattern yeah but we don't have that pattern yet there's just a sharp rise good morning antonio hope you're doing good all right guys we're gonna wrap things up um and i want to thank you so much for for joining me um a final little thing here in regards to stock market trading and investing there's a solid strategy that work for many many years and this is just you buy shares or stocks for a money amount every month if you're going to retire in 10 years, yeah, you probably shouldn't be buying too heavily. Actually, if you're trying to five years, you should not be buying at all, but uh, heavily. But if you are you're going to retire in 20 years, then it's just about buying and buying, I think. And when it slides like it does, did recently, we tried to buy a bit more. And the idea is that when you accumulate every month, then 20 years from now or whatever, you'll get the average return. So the average return for something like the S&P is I think it's like 9% or something like that, which is still much better than you get on a bank account. Is it much better than real estate? Well, probably not. It depends on what you do with real estate, but it's always good to have some sort of combination, you know, uh, and, and that's the way I would look at it. And then of course, what you can do is that you can do, you, you have a certain amount of money into what we're doing here you don't have to again it's up to you i can just tell you what i'm doing okay uh or i have money there where i trade and speculate and i found that amusing and fun as well it's always a little bit of excitement even though it should not really be like that but you always want to win uh so so that way you you don't have all your eggs in one basket um that that's how i would do and that's how many of the very wealthy do they have many different streams Maybe at the beginning you can't, uh, and it's fine if you want to put all your money into a CFT and spreading account, as long as you're comfortable with the risk. 
you know, there's always a risk that we we all get into trouble. And let me tell you a very important story about that and leverage. So there was a poor Canadian guy that thought he was making the deal of his lifetime. So on last month or so, when you had the big crash in oil, he started trading his account. He had like 77,000 Canadian dollars on his account. And then he bought crude oil, I think just for two and a half grand or something like that. It was not a lot of money. And then he, it slid and it went lower and lower and lower. And then eventually he saw that, um, he saw that, uh, you know, he, he could buy like oil for 50, 50 cents a barrel, right? But because his broker's account was not set up correctly, it didn't understand what happened when it went negative. All the margin calculations went on all wrong. So the poor guy, he thought like, oh, wow, like I can buy crude oil for 50 cents a barrel. And he didn't understand the whole concept of expiring uh, futures. So you, you can buy a five, but then it needs to go up. If it doesn't go up before it close, you're going to get delivery. So he thought he was buying and getting sort of a mega deal. Um, but he didn't know the prices were negative. And that evening, when he received a statement confirmation from his broker, uh, uh, he had lost $9 million. So he started with 77,000 uh, Canadian dollar. And then by the end of the day, he had lost uh, $9 uh, million. Now, of course, there was some technical issue with the platform. So according to the financial press, at least, uh, you know, he will, he will get his money back according to a statement. Um, but that's where you are. I'm not saying you're going to lose that money. For example, if you work with an FCA regulated broker like ATFX, if you're working with the FCA regulated broker, you will not lose more when you deposit it, uh, for example. Um, he was trading with a broker, an American broker, and I think that client was treated like a professional because it's just a professional environment that they work with. And in that situation, you can actually end up owing people money. Uh, long story short, there's always a risk that you can lose all of your investor money. So you should never really invest money that you cannot afford to lose, okay? If you lose the money, it shouldn't be a situation where you need to take your kid out of school or something like that. You need to sell your house. If you want to minimize that, you understand that better. As I said before, we have that premium course. If you sign up here, uh, you get a few emails with more information on how to get things going. As well, you will receive a phone call probably next week uh, because it's a bank holiday in the UK tomorrow or Monday. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you guys on Monday. Thank you, and bye-bye. Sorry, Tuesday.